Here we are again, it's day three. Definitely getting tired. It's a, It's been a hard push every day, but I did finish out kind of where I wanted yesterday. The primer dried within an hour to be able to recoat, so I went ahead and got color on this uh, as I showed. The This did turn out really good. Still have some small imperfections in there when you get it right in direct light, but honestly, when I get it hung up, it's you're, you're never gonna see the stuff. And it's a brew panel, it's not a car. Um, had, a, had a couple pieces where I had some overspray and I actually ended up taping off and painting the inside of this lip because uh, I forgot it, it, last night when the door closes, there's a small gap. So I would have seen like that vanilla cream color so I went ahead and actually backed, back taped uh, the inside of this lip and scuffed this all and um, touched up the inside and then and then hit this all uh, so it's got a good break between the two colors and uh, so this is still kind of curing up curing up I don't know if I'll necessarily do any work on the panel today I may put my my temp probe mounts in there or something but I'm probably going to go ahead and work on my kettles and getting my elements in my ten probes mounted. It gives us another 24, 48 hours to dry and then hopefully tomorrow I can come in fresh and have like a solid day of wiring and uh, installing stuff in the panel. So here we go. Close up of the panel, I'll turn the light on there. So you can see here too, those are a couple of grind marks that obviously are very pronounced in the in the light, but it's the bottom of the panel, I'm not too concerned. I, I could have primed and blocked and primed and blocked a couple times and got this down to pretty good stuff, but I, I kind of touched up the inside and here's the Here's the panel, like I said, that metallic really, that's kind of cool, that flake, and there's glitter, it's, you know, it's like stripper glitter in there, but um, it's not true pearl or anything, but uh, it looks pretty cool. I think once I get the, the panel loaded with everything, it's really going to, really going to pop um, on the sides here. I did find that you got to sand that, that clear stuff down and get rid of kind of that that coating orange peel piece because in a couple spots that I, I didn't bring it literally all the way down, you can still see through it. But uh, on the big long pieces here, I got this is incredibly, incredibly smooth and uh, the paint laid really well too. So it's probably enough of the panel. Here we go on this. I had my false bottom put in. I chose to go with a weldless tri clamp. Uh, I'm not going to have somebody weld on this kettle. I looked at the silver solder, but it was literally just a couple bucks more to just do the weldless, and then it covers my my cut and everything too. And I wanted to go with this style element rather than to have the, the piece with the cord off the end. Uh, just in cleaning, then I got like a dongle hanging off of this thing, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to deal with that. And if I ever do want to use propane again, or use propane for anything, then now I got that in the way. The key here is going to be, I obviously want to mount this as low as possible, but I got a clear, my bottom port with my pickup tube and I have to clear my studs in here. I want to put my temp probe here. I want to kind of have my cord off to the side. So just going to be a ton of thinking and measuring in here. You know, I did go with this element one just because it's, it's, she got more surface area. So it's a lower watt density, but then two, the, the longer straight one, wouldn't fit in this kettle. This is a 15 inch diameter kettle or just a titch over with a 14.75 inch 
false bottom, which gives me just enough wiggle room and is going should be perfect for my brew in a bag. My goal with all this is to still be able to do e-brew in the bag if I want. Uh, I can still just do this with my mash ton hot liquor tank yet. I can also use this as my hot liquor tank, even though it's only like eight gallons, but I could still do it. And that's kind of my plan now. And then I still have my larger kettle, which I'm going to do next. So I think I'm going to have to do this to clear, you know, have it rotated this way to clear my pickup tube. Obviously I want it centered as much as possible. The problem you run into as well is like, you know, when you start going around and you square this thing up, it's going to do this on you. Obviously, too, I need to go as low as possible in the kettle. Uh, I believe this is a three and a quarter um, standoffs. Yeah, it's about three and a quarter. So, and even with this, I'm at two inches. So I have, I have enough wiggle room. Not, you know, not a ton. It is going to be, it is going to be close largest concern like I want it low I got to make sure I don't have it so low that I can't get my nut on there and I and I got to make sure it seals too because I don't want to be on that the lip to where I'm trying to tighten this thing and it's hitting on that lip so I think in this case I'm gonna transfer my mind to the inside Square. I said I had three and a quarter to the bottom of my. Oh, that's gonna have to come off. The three and a quarter to the bottom of my grate. with that three and a quarter that uh, I'm gonna have a little bit more room than that but now granted I can back those studs off a little bit probably gain a quarter of an inch you know easily but uh... okay so this is what I'm gonna do here to figure out where this where that, to figure out where my kettle starts to Curve down. Use my straight edge. Right there. Okay, so right about there, I can see that it's like it's just starting to pull away. Uh, that gasket will take. That's really flat. That's just starting to pull out. That is it right there. So, you know, as a straight edge, as a straight edge hits that, it's going to start creating a gap. So I'm just going to come down as far as that's going to go. You know, and I'm not going to, no, this is rigid, it's not going to do it. You don't want to use something that's flimsy to where it'll take that bend. Calm down. Calm down, calm down. And then mark the bottom of this. Wherever I mount this. I know that that nut can't go past. I know that nut can't go past that. Because if I, and you know, and obviously too that this is, you know, 
well, this is two inches, but if you measure on the hex, that's two and a quarter. Now, now granted, I should be able to turn this uh, potentially, but it's like if I end up like this, I don't want to be on that ridge either because the last thing I want this to do is leak. So what I'm going to do is come up two and a quarter from this now, which is the furthest point of this thing. Where's that going to put me? Am I going to... Ooh, buddy. And I'm telling you that is right at the bottom of that of that rack. I mean, it is. Oh, man. We might even be at like two and an eighth. So, so this is going to get interesting quickly. As it usually does for my luck. That is two and an eighth. That's the bottom of my ridge. And I need, you know, two and a quarter to hit my, I need a quarter. Oh, look, my line's actually a little bit off, I think. Oh, no, I'm okay. Look at that. All right, folks, so I got to move this kettle so I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm trying to film this, and my measurement is off, so. You want to talk about tight. So there's, there's the bottom of my container. It's three and a half, that's three and a quarter. Right there, at least I think it is. And there's my. Let me tell you guys, that is that is exactly at my two and a quarter, which is three and a quarter off the bottom, which is the bottom of that grate. So essentially, if I'm off a titch, uh, something's gonna hit. So I think what I'm gonna do, um, since I'm barely certain that that is my line which is my, like I said, two and a quarter. That's the bottom of where it starts to curve up and it actually flattens out right there. I have maybe a titch of wiggle room right there. I could cheat it down if I had to, but I'm gonna put my grade in and I'm gonna see compared to that line, where does the bottom of my grade sit? And I can see I can see it. Uh, here, we'll shoot this. Man, you can't see it. There it is. So you see, that's the, that's my line. I do actually have about an eighth of an inch there. And like I said, that line down there is when it starts to flatten out. So I can't go any, you know, too much lower than that. Now I'm looking in this too. I got a little bit of lead weight, like I said, e even so because, because this has this little lip on here. You can see this. So this will sit on the outside of the kettle. The gas is going to give me a little bit of lead weight. This lip on the inside should give me a little bit of lead weight too. So that's a space. And uh, that's kind of where it makes contact. Know too that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to measure this again. I think it says to, uh, it's an inch and five eighths cutout. And this is Mark. Well, that says inch and a half. I'm going to measure, measure this. Size. I'm going to make this thing as tight as possible. Not like thread end tight, but, well, that is, that is exactly an inch and five eighths. Okay. I mean, it's just, just my, my kettle I had forever and I really don't want to mess it up. So we'll take a couple more measurements here. Try to find center of this that I can drill. And I do have a knockout tool. If you don't have one of those, you can use carbide pole saw, but I'm going to try to do it with a knockout and see what it does. There was that lip, there was that lip. Look at that. So we're going to measure in centimeters here on half of this sucker because so this is my high line, my low line. Actually measuring it out in centimeters rather than inches. It just so happens that two and a quarter is like exactly six centimeters. So obviously half of that's three. Um, I could go just a pitch down if I had to. But I got about an eighth inch wiggle room that way, eighth of an inch that way, or maybe even just a sixteenth. But I, I do that a little bit. Ooh, ooh. This is, that's definitely center. Oh, I don't like I don't like that actually. Obviously something round versus something square. It's like look at how much flex I have there. 
It's going to take this round like this anyways, and, uh, which is actually going to help me. Because of the curve this way, it spaces it out, which actually helps me this way too. And it's going to let me get this a little bit lower, I think, which is what I want. It's got to be up to really high, as long as I'm not hitting. You know, it rounds on the inside really sooner than the outside. And a half. And a half. And that was the top for the two and a quarter, right? So there's my line. Three centimeters through the center. It's much too low for that. I've measured again from the outside. Just kind of looking at. Where this can sit with the outside placement, and like you can see there, that's kind of my my lip. You can just see it just from where. Obviously, I need that saw about a quarter inch in order to seal. So if I put that right on there and then center it, I measured that out, and I was at nine and an eighth. I don't think I'm going to gain anything more than that. It's Physically, about as low as I think I'm going to be able to get it. Um, measure, 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 measure. Well, I don't think I'm going to get any better than that. I measured it. Since I got my measurement on the inside, I'll punch my initial hole through from there and then come in from the outside. Okay, so I ran into a small stag. My knockout tool was not the right size. It was going to make a much larger hole than, uh, than I was wanting. I mean, the goal is to have it as tight as possible around this so there's as much surface area with this gasket. Um, I ended up doing it dirty and bringing it with the largest step bed I had and filing the rest out, which I would not advise. A mostly round hole, got a little bit of wiggle room. Should should seal up. Now I'll look at something else on my other kettle, but um, before I put this on, I'm gonna go ahead and get all these metal shavings out. I'm gonna go wash it down with good hot soapy water. Try to get everything out of there and make sure that uh, you know I'm not getting anything into the fitting or anything when I seal it up. It's important whether you're drilling or whatever you do with with this cutout. Hit it with a you know round file to deburr it, and then I came back just very slightly, you know, around the edge, 
hit it with uh, some 150 grit sandpaper and I mean it's very there's no sharp edges to cut my cut myself or cut the gasket is the, the main piece so get this washed up I'm gonna put that on I already test fit the element it looks really good so we're going to the next piece this is all cleaned up so it is time to mount this this piece Did buy the socket with it, it was like 14 bucks. You know, you know, can't find it cheaper anywhere else. And again, this was the same small local shop. Not too concerned about it. But as you mentioned that you know, there's nothing to hold the thing from spinning on the other side, so I'm gonna use a pair of channel locks, but I'm gonna put a wrench on there so that the teeth don't don't chew into the, the dry clamp. I just wanna I just wanna kind of keep it from is storing it you know if I leave the element in so I don't bend my prongs but the cool thing is I can just take the element out with the with the tri on there so I'll test this for leaks and then I'm gonna go ahead and mount my tent probe as well. Fingers crossed this was to like put it right here under my well port but thinking about it you know wart's gonna drain out of here and I don't want a cable and stuff when I'm trying to get my capture that I, I got like a little bucket I'm usually throw under when I move my fittings so then I was gonna go here but uh, that just seems busy it seems like a lot going on so I may just come right over here like this and uh, it still keeps my grouping here so when my my screen comes in so I just got to get under this I want I do want to mount it at the same height as my other one just to keep things like uniform and things looking good I guess if I put that right there I'm going to be all the way up in there that's not We don't have any leaks. I'm gonna go ahead and drain this thing and get the temp probe going in. Other thoughts with this, you know, on my larger kettle, this can go in the back somewhere where the cord's not gonna be in my way, but I can't do that because of way that this you know I gotta be able to take this out obviously to clean so I gotta have everything on the same side so I can come in underneath all of this stuff up front all these ports and so and then clear my element and, uh, the only way to still mount this on the back side would be to potentially you know come up in here or something but 
that's that's absolutely going to give me a false reading because it's going to be so close to the element. I got this. Th this port here is mounted at about five and a quarter up from the bottom. It's served me well. It's right about in the middle of where my work would be. So I think we'll just put it off to the side here a little bit and see where it comes in. again check for leaks so there it is elements in still got my old temp probe both ports new new temp probe and I needed to, need to keep this on this side so I can get under it and, and drop this and there it is if I only had my brew panel done uh, we'd fire this thing up and do a test run but uh, we're not there yet, so this is kettle one done. I'll be coming back and doing my second kettle. Big kettle all wrapped up. Same steps, not going to film it twice. Uh, much thicker walls on this uh, brew built kettle, so I put the temp probe in the exact same spot. I was going to put it in the back, but then my thought was when I'm in here stirring and everything, prefer to have all kind of the hardware in one spot so I know to you know not be smacking into my probes and stuff um, you know so I know all that's pretty much clear pretty well centered looks really good I'm gonna go ahead and clean and do a leak test on everything for button this thing up and start on my cords I do want to add real quick on this one too it takes an inch and a inch and five eighths cut out or knock out however you want to do it so on this one knowing that my knockout tool wasn't going to work uh, i was past the point of no return on the last one because i already used the unibit to be able to get the bolt in for the knockout kit so i had to use like a unibit to stay centered but on this one i knew that wasn't going to work so i just went ahead and used a hole saw used an inch and a half and then actually just filed that last little bit uh, for a real nice snug fit and it worked like a champ so um and you look at the cost of a whole saw set too versus if you're going to buy a, a unibit, it's like whole saw is going to be the most pro cost efficient way to, to probably do it. I didn't have any issues. I filed it out and cleaned up the birds and everything. And as you see, it, it mounted really well. So. All right, I'm going to be making two cables for this. One's shorter, one's longer. And this one's in worse shape, so I'm going to start with this. Essentially, this was up here like that, and, and the, these outer pieces had, uh, had cables showing it, so this was taped off. And this, no, this is repurposed cable, but I'm going to fix it for, for what I'm needing. Essentially, I'm just going to go ahead and clean these up. Shorten them up. Right there on all these. 
So this is an L630R, it's labeled XGY, which is labeled right here on the outlet, so I know where everything goes now. Green is always your ground, earth ground that is. This cable doesn't have a red, but it's got a white. That's you know, the same thing for the purpose of this. Green is green, or G is green rather. I always like to always like to tighten these by hand. So one, I don't over tighten them, but the more important thing is that. I don't under tighten them like with a drill clutch or something because you get a loose connection in there and then you can arc and create heat and melt your plug down. X is my black, which is next up here. And it sucks because you guys can't see this, I think, because my hand. Okay, nice and tight too, not, not over tightening it, but. It's definitely, I, I definitely got something on it. And Y would be my red, which in this case is white. I'm just going to check on the end and make sure I got enough wire in there. That's it, this is the male side complete, female side. Same thing with this, this is labeled. What cable goes where? Try to get these through my rubber boot. I wish my whites. I've got another reason I like to do these all by hand. Plastic will strip out, obviously. These are drill and absorb the torch, so you know, plastic you can, you can kind of feel it. And you want it tight, you don't want to snap it or strip it. Or, you can use it to undo it with a drill, but Plug's done. And this cord's done. Let's see, this is about eight feet, maybe ten. I didn't measure, but that'll, that'll be the first one. Uh, cable two. All right, we're wrapping up day three. Garage is getting hot, so it's it's definitely time that I finish out where I want to be. Paint's going to finish curing for another 24 hours before I start handling anything. I got my 
both kettles done with elements in, temperature probes mounted, leak tested. The ruin bag false bottom fits just like I wanted. Good closeout for today. So that's pretty much it. The next iteration of this is going to be just wiring, uh, mounting my DIN rail, kind of putting the box together and, and getting all the components in and then, and then turn around and wiring everything. So might be one day, might be two days, hopefully it's not three, but that's what's next. So keep watching.